Hello and welcome, my name is Alex. So recently I decided to remake the Draw Climber game and I thought I'd share with you all how I went about making it. Now obviously we're not going to make the full game because that would take much too long, but we're going to make everything you can see here such as how to draw the climber arms or how to move the climber using the Unity Physics Engine. Just a bit of a disclaimer, I didn't make the original Draw Climber app and this video is just for educational purposes. So in part one, we're looking at how to draw a mesh in Unity. So to begin with, we need to set up a new Unity project I'm using 2021 long-term support version of Unity and I've selected the 3D URP core template. I'm using URP because later in the project we'll be doing some camera stacking and the universal render pipeline makes it a bit easier for that. Okay, so we're also going to be using Unity's new input system, so let's install that. So if you go to Package Manager by going to Windows, Package Manager, uh, select Unity Registry from the drop down, then scroll down until you find Input System Package and hit Install. After you install a new package, Unity will want to restart Uh, we also want to use both new and old input systems, so if you open up the project settings window, select player, then in other settings find active input handling, in the drop down next to it, select both. Uh, Unity would want to restart again. Alright, that should be the last time we have to restart Unity, at least for this tutorial. Okay, so to be able to draw using our mouse or touch device, we need to register two input events. The first is when we click on the left mouse button, it's looked up on the screen, I'll initiate the drawing process and the second input is when we release the left mouse button stroke remove our finger from the touch device uh, doing that will complete the draw process so let's create an input actions map for these events right so right click on the project window go to create select input actions at the bottom of the tooltip i'm going to name my file player open up the actions file create a new action map name it create an action called start draw add a binding to it you can add multiple bindings I'm adding one to register a left mouse button click, another to register a single touch on a touch screen. Add another action, call it end draw, add a press interaction to that, and change the trigger behavior to release only. Uh, then add your bindings, use the same bindings you use for the start draw action, mine our left mouse button and single touch press. After that, save the action file, then close it. Okay, so we want to connect those actions to a script where our drawing code will be housed. So in our scene, if we go into hierarchy, add a new empty game object. Uh, let's call it draw mesh. Then add a new script to that, call that draw mesh as well. Open up the script in whatever code editor you're using. I'm using Visual Studio 2022. Uh, remove the update method, we won't be using it. At the top in the namespace section, we need to include our new input systems package. Now we need to add in our start draw and end draw methods. They need to be publicly accessible, and then the parameters pass through a callback context. Save that, go back into Unity. Okay, so we still haven't quite connected those methods to our input actions. To do that, we need to add a player input component to the draw mesh game object. So under actions, attach the input actions asset. Then next to behavior, change the drop down from send messages to invoke Unity events. And you should see an events drop down appear. This lists the events in our actions file. From here, we can connect up our methods in our script to the actions in our actions asset. Okay, let's just check if our inputs are working correctly. We can do that by going into our code and in our start draw and end draw methods, we'll output a message to the console. So if we go back to the script, add in debug.log statements for both methods. If you run that now, you'll probably notice the log is outputting multiple times for the start draw and end draw methods. This is because our methods are called multiple times with a different context. Those being started, performed and cancelled. We want it to only register when the input has been performed. So let's check in our script. So try it again and you should only see one log for each method. All right, now our input is set up, we can move on to the drawing. So like any other drawing program, our cursor is the pen, and as we click, stroke, touch on an area, the color is applied onto the canvas. The same is true here, but instead of allowing pixels onto a screen or in contour paper, we're going to be constructing a 3D mesh in our scene. So hopefully you know a little bit about meshes, but if not, here's a quick explanation of them. So a mesh is a collection of data that defines the shape of a virtual 3D model. So for example, here we have a 3D model of a cube, a mesh can have a lot of different elements, but today we're just going to be focusing on the vertices and the faces. So vertices are points in space defined by an x, y, z coordinate. On our cube, the vertices are the corner points. A single point is called a vertex. So to be able to form the face of a cube, the computer needs to know how all these points in space relate to one another. So in our mesh, our vertices are stored in an array. And then we have a second array that defines the faces of the cube. So each element in our face array is an index of a vertex in our vertices array. Here we actually break up each face into two triangles, so really our face array is actually a, an array of triangles. So the first three elements in our triangles array will reference three points in the vertices array, 
that make up a single triangle. Uh, the order of your triangle array is also important because it defines what direction the triangle is facing. Uh, if you find this a bit confusing, I've linked some written documentation below that goes into it in a bit more detail. Now if we go back into Unity, so to create our mesh we need to get our cursor position in world space and to do that our drawn mesh script needs a reference to the camera. So I'm going to attach our main camera to the player input component then in the draw mesh script we can grab our ref camera reference from player input. Okay, so next I'm creating the draw function, which will be in a coroutine. Uh, if you want to know more about coroutines, I've recently made a video on them. Okay, so in our start draw method, we're going to start the draw coroutine, and in the end draw method, we're going to stop the coroutine. Right, so in draw, let's first create a new game object to house our mesh. It'll need a mesh filter and a mesh renderer. Next, let's create our mesh. Now a vertices array. To begin with, we'll need eight points. Okay, let's calculate our mouse position in world coordinates. Since our camera position is at minus 10 on the Z, uh, if we pass through a, a vector whose value on the Z is 10, then the returning vector 3 will have a Z value of 0. So I want my drawing to start from a single point, so I'm going to have all my vertices set to the start position. Okay, so now we need to construct our triangles array. Although initially our mesh is starting from a point, we still need to add in triangles as if we were constructing a cube. So a cube has six faces, and each face is, has two triangles, and there are three points in a triangle, so we need a triangle array of six times two times three, which will be 36. Okay, so we need to go through each element in our triangle array and define our faces. Uh, then we assign our triangles and vertices to the mesh we created and that mesh to our drawing object. So if we run that now, you won't see too much, but we have a drawing object and if we look at our mesh, we can see that there are eight vertices and 12 triangles, which is correct. All right, so we're gonna be making modifications to our mesh as we do our drawing. So instead of having vertices and triangles as arrays, let's use lists instead. Uh, this will make it easy to add new elements. When setting this, we need to convert our list into an array. Okay, we're going to need to store the value of our mouse position in order to calculate our vertices. Uh, next, we're going to create a while loop. So I'm just having it as while true for the moment. Generally speaking, you shouldn't do this. It's bad practice and can crash your program, but for right now, it's fine. Uh, okay, now let's expand our list. So with each iteration, we want to add four more vertices and to connect those vertices to the rest of the mesh, we need five more faces. So two triangles per face and three indices per triangle, so we increase our range by 30. We only need five more faces because we don't need to add in any more front faces. Uh, okay, let's grab some index positions from our list of vertices. We want the indices for the last four vertices that we added and the next four that we're about to add in. Uh, okay, let's calculate our new vertices. So first we want to get a direction between our last mouse position and our current mouse position. Right, so to get our first vertex position, we're going to use some vector maths. So we have our forward vector, now we want to get the up vector. So if we get the cross product of our forward vector and the global back vector, that will produce an up vector. We can then move along that vector by multiplying it by a value. This will give us a height to the mesh. Uh, then to calculate the final position, we simply add that on to our current mouse position. Uh, the next vertex is calculated in much the same way, except we use the down vector instead. Okay, that's the top right vertex and the bottom right vertex done. So to calculate the left vertices, we simply take the positions of our right vertices, but we set the Z position to one. All right, now let's add those to our vertices list. They should be added in in this order, so the triangles list is referencing the correct vertices. 
Right, so we expanded our triangles list by 30, so we need to assign a vertex index to each of those 30 elements. So working out which vertex index goes in which triangle's element can be quite difficult and confusing, but we can make it much easier by reversing the order of our previous vertices index values. So let's change v index 0 to be equal to v index plus 3, then 1 to 2, 2 to 1, and finally 3 to 0. Right, now we need to get the triangle index at the start of our new set of triangles. So t index equals triangles count minus 30. So let's define the faces. We're skipping the front face, so let's start with this top face. The triangle value for the very first top face of our mesh is 2, 3, 4, and 2, 4, 5. So here we just need to get the same relative vertex indices. So our triangle's values here will be v index 2, v index 3, v index 4, then v index 2, v index 4, v index 5. Then we just repeat this process for the rest of the faces. Okay, now we need to apply new vertices and triangles to the mesh and update the last mouse position. Right, we should be able to draw something in Unity now. So let's give it a go. Okay, so if we click and draw our shape, so it looks pink because we haven't assigned it a material. Uh, that's also why it isn't shaded. Another issue is that spiking, as you can see. I think that's because our drawing coroutine is running too quickly, meaning the cursor hasn't had time to move before the draw calculates new vertices. So let's fix that. So if we define a min distance, uh, this will be the minimum distance allowed between our previous vertices and our new ones. Then let's get the distance between our current cursor position and our last cursor position. Uh, then in our while loop, if we say while distance is less than min distance, then recalculate distance and return. Uh, all right, let's try that out. Okay, cool. Now we've got a nice smooth looking mesh. Uh, and if we go into the scene and change our shading mode to wireframe, we can see that our mesh is three dimensional. All right, last thing before we finish. Uh, let's give it a color. So up here, if we get the renderer attached to the drawing object, uh, I can access this material and then change its color. Uh, I'm going to set it to green because that's my favorite. Um, so let's try that out now. Awesome. So setting the color has given our mesh a lit material. Also because of some Unity magic, our mesh is shaded even though we don't have any normals attached to it. So that's all we're going to do for today. In the next part, we'll finish off the drawing section and work on creating the climber. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions about this project, please leave a comment. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.